Here, we'll explain how to name ionic compounds that consist of two elements. Before we go through the rules and give you examples, we'll point out a few important things about the periodic table we're given. Here it is. First of all, notice it has a staircase from the left of boron to the bottom of element 118. All elements to the left of this staircase are metals, and all elements to the right of it are nonmetals. If we take a closer look at the metals, we can see the little number on the top right of each box. This gives us the most common charge of the ion formed by the metal. For example, the most common ion of magnesium has a charge of positive 2. You may have also noticed that some of the metals, such as magnesium, have only one number on the top right. This means there's only one possible charge on its ion. Many of the other metals have more than one number on the top right, such as titanium. Ions of these metals have more than one possible charge. For example, some titanium ions have a charge of positive 4, and some have a charge of positive 3. Here we've highlighted metals on our table that have only one possible charge. These include groups 1, 2, and 3 on the left, and a few metals in the middle and bottom regions. Now we've highlighted metals on our table that have more than one possible charge. Notice ions of these metals have from two to four possible charges. We don't need to memorize these as we can always use this table, but you may have noticed that these are all located in the center and bottom regions of the table. There are some elements on this table that are not shown in either group, like the ones in the orange rectangle. We won't worry about these at this point. Now that we're familiar with this periodic table, let's look at the rules for naming ionic compounds with two elements. Ionic compounds with two elements consist of one metal and one nonmetal. For example, a compound consisting of calcium and fluorine is ionic. Another example could be a compound consisting of chromium and sulfur. Any compound with one element on the left of the staircase and one element on the right is an ionic compound with two elements. Now let's have a look at the steps we use to name ionic compounds with two elements. The metal is always first in the name, and the nonmetal is second in the name. The name of the nonmetal ion is always changed to make it end in IDE. But we don't change the metal element's name. What we must do now is look up the metal on the periodic table. If the metal ion has only one possible charge, we do not add a Roman numeral after its name, and we're finished at this point. However, if the metal has more than one possible charge, then we must add a Roman numeral after the metal's name. And this Roman numeral gives the charge in one ion of the metal. Let's do a couple of examples following these steps. We're asked to name the compound K3N. We see that K, or potassium, is a metal, and N, or nitrogen, is a nonmetal. The first two rules tell us to put the metal first and the nonmetal second in the name. This gives us potassium nitrogen. The third rule tells us to change the ending of the nonmetal to IDE. So we write the name as potassium nitride. We see the metal potassium has only one possible charge. So according to rule number four, we don't change the metal's name, and we don't add any Roman numerals. Therefore, the final answer is the name of this compound is potassium nitride. Let's do another example. We're asked to name the compound MnSe2. We can start by locating the elements manganese and selenium on the periodic table. This time, we'll do the first three steps all together. We write the name of the metal, followed by the name of the nonmetal, ending in IDE. So we'll write down manganese selenide. This time, we see the metal manganese has more than one possible charge. Rule number four reminds us that if the metal has more than one possible charge, we must find out what the charge is and express it as a Roman numeral in the name. We start this process by looking in the compound formula and seeing that it has one Mn ion and two Se ions. So we write down one Mn on the left and two Se's on the right like this. 
Now we look up the nonmetal ion selenide on the periodic table and we see that each selenide ion has a charge of negative 2. We add negative 2 charges to both selenide ions like this. Now we add up the negative charges and we see that the total negative charge is negative 4, which means the total positive charge must be positive 4. The total positive charge and negative charge always adds up to 0. Since there's only one manganese ion, it must have a charge of positive 4. Therefore, we add the Roman numeral 4, or IV, after the name of the metal. Notice we always write parentheses around the Roman numeral. And the final name of our compound is manganese 4 selenide, written like this. Unless the name is at the beginning of a sentence, compound names usually start with lowercase letters rather than capital letters. Here's one for you to try. Name the compound CR3P2. Pause the video and try this on your own first. Then resume the video and check your answer. We look up chromium and phosphorus on the periodic table and we see chromium is a metal and phosphorus is a nonmetal. We can do the first three steps all at once. The name of the metal is chromium and it comes first. And the name of the nonmetal is phosphorus and we change its ending to IDE, so it's phosphide. Checking chromium, we see it has more than one possible charge. Therefore, we must determine the charge on one ion of chromium and add that as a Roman numeral after chromium in the name. The formula has three chromium ions and two phosphide ions, so we write three CRs and two Ps down here. We see the charge on one phosphide ion is negative three. We add negative three charges to both phosphide ions. We add the two negative three charges to give us a total negative charge of negative six. Therefore, we can say the total positive charge is positive six. This positive six charge must be shared equally by the three chromium ions. So each chromium ion must have a charge of positive two. Three positive twos add up to give positive six, the total positive charge. The charge on a single chromium ion is positive two. Therefore, the Roman numeral two is written after chromium in the name. And our final answer is the name of this compound is chromium-2-phosphide. <laughs>